Hi, my name is Mathieu pelletier -Arnaud. I'm a fifth year resident in nuclear medicine. And I'll present to you the result of a randomized trial comparing the effects of ticagrelor versus clopidogrel on myocardial perfusion patients with coronary artery disease. Ticagrelor is a reversible P2Y12 receptor antagonist used in patients with ACS. Back in 2009, the PLATO trial showed lower rates of cardiovascular death, MI stroke, lower rates of all-cause mortality, and higher rates of dyspnea with ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel. Um, it is thought that these differences could be due to uh, effects on myocardial perfusion in addition to antiplatelets properties of the medication. The objective of the study is to compare the effects of ticagrelor versus clopidogrel in patients with stable CAD on myocardial blood flow at both rest and during intermediate and high dose adenosine infusion. And the idea behind this is if there are effects that are mediated uh, through adenosine, we should see differences at intermediate dosage. To answer that question, we recruited 26 patients who were randomized in a double-blind crossover study. The first group started with ticagrelor, 90 milligrams twice a day for 10 days, and then we proceeded with PET imaging, then a washout period of 10 days, and then they were switched to clopidogrel, 75 milligrams once daily for 10 days, and then we proceed with imaging. The second group started with clopidogrel and then were switched to ticagrelor. Myocardial blood flow was measured using uh, PET rubidium following the regular uh, clinical protocol. For every imaging session, we recorded, uh, we measured uh, three different states. Baseline study, intermediate adenosine dosage, and high dose adenosine. So for every patient, we had a total of six acquisitions, three for ticagrelor and three for clopidogrel. And here are the results. The gray bar represents clopidogrel and the white bar represents ticagrelor. Um, as you can see, at the intermediate dosage of adenosine, the myocardial blood flow was greater with ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel, while we saw no significant differences at high dose adenosine and at baseline. Now, if we take the left ventricle and we, uh, split into, we split it into its 17 segments, and we only look at the segments which have low or normal uh, flow reserve, we see that in these segments, the myocardial blood flow was greater with ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel at both intermediate and high dose adenosine. If we look at the segments with high flow reserve, Myocardial blood flow was greater with ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel at both baseline and intermediate adenosine dosage. Here's an example uh, of a patient we had. Uh, the first row represents the clopidogrel and the second row represents ticagrelor. And these are the bullseye images representing the myocardial blood flow. Blue, uh, blue means low blood flow and uh, red mean, um, means high blood flow. And, so for every imaging state, so at baseline, intermediate dosage, and high uh, dosage, the blood flow was greater with ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel. But more interestingly, in that patient, we see that there is a scar in the uh, LAD territory. And with ticagrelor, we see that the scar appears slightly smaller with better perfusion in the perinfarct region. So in conclusion, we showed that global myocardial blood flow was greater with the ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel during intermediate adenosine dosage. We also showed that regional myocardial blood flow in segments with reduced myocardial blood flow reserve was greater with the ticagrelor compared to clopidogrel during intermediate and high dose adenosine. These results suggest that ticagrelor may potentiate the adenosine-induced myocardial perfusion increases in patients with stable CAD and that could expl explain the incremental mortality benefit we see with the Cagrelor. Thank you. So with this project, we use molecular imaging to better understand how a new medication is working. There's this new medication called the Cagrelor that we give to patients with acute coronary syndrome or uh, heart attack. And that medication has been shown to be more efficient than the current standard of care. And by more efficient, I mean that we reduce mortality and we reduce adverse events. Um, there are theories on why this medication is better than the current medication, but it's not fully understood yet. So we were able to demonstrate using molecular imaging that there are fundamental differences into, with, between these two medications and that the, actually the blood flow to the heart 
is greater with the new medication, Ticagrelor. Um, the University of Ottawa Heart Institute is really a pioneer and a world leader in uh, cardiovascular molecular imaging. Uh, and we were able to use all that knowledge and expertise that, has, that have been uh, developed over several years and apply it to a very uh, important question. And we were able to provide an answer to that question. 